we're going to go back at the first part of next year, four astronauts going out to the moon and around it and coming back. Right? That's the first time in 54 years we will wow. have done that. October 13th is an incredibly moving day. Exactly a year ago, we witnessed history with the first mid-air catch attempt of the Super Heavy Booster during Starship Flight 5. Now we're celebrating yet another major step forward in the journey toward full reusability and the dream of landing Americans on the moon's south pole. What SpaceX has accomplished with Flight 11 truly touches the heart, and the recent announcement from NASA's acting administrator, Sean Duffy, about Starship Flight 11 has completely left us in awe. He called Flight 11 a major step toward landing Americans on the moon's south pole for the Artemis program. For the people who grew up with Apollo 11, hearing this feels like a second moonshot. Duffy highlighted how this success bolsters Artemis II, set for April 2026, with a crewed lunar orbit and sets the stage for Artemis III in mid-2027, where Starship will land humans at the South Pole. And he threw down the gauntlet, beating China back to the moon. The end of an era is paving the way for a new frontier. Flight 11 is the last mission to ever lift off from Pad A in its current configuration. SpaceX is using this final block flight as a stepping stone to propel the Starship program into its next great chapter. The era of Block 3, Raptor 3 engines, and a cutting-edge new launch pad design. And what a great end it was. Explosive, triumphant, and a perfect send-off for these trailblazing prototypes. Context is everything. China's eyeing a 2030 crewed landing with a nuclear-powered research station at the South Pole alongside Russia. Naturally, the U.S. aims to get there first not just to demonstrate leadership in space exploration, but to ensure key regions of the moon remain dedicated to peaceful purposes. Leading the way also enables the U.S. to strengthen alliances and help shape the principles that guide humanity's future in space. Artemis III, planned for around 2027, is one of NASA's most critical missions. It aims to send astronauts to the moon's south pole, a region believed to hold water ice that could sustain future explorers. Two astronauts will descend to the surface for about a week of scientific research and exploration, while the rest of the crew remains in lunar orbit. NASA has selected SpaceX's Starship, the most powerful rocket system ever built, to handle a crucial leg of this lunar journey. However, uncertainty remains about whether the vehicle will be fully ready in time. Growing concerns suggest that the Starship Lunar Lander variant under development for NASA might not be perfected before the planned 2027 mission, and possibly not before China makes its own crewed landing later in the decade. These worries stem from several setbacks, including three consecutive Block II explosions earlier this year. Meanwhile, a fierce competitor is nipping at our heels. Bill Nye, the entertainer of Science Guy fame and CEO of the nonprofit exploration advocacy group, the Planetary Society, remarked, the China National Space Administration will almost certainly walk on the moon within the next five years. This is a turning point, a pivotal moment in the history of space exploration. Criticism has continued to swirl around SpaceX and its Starship program, even though Elon Musk has repeatedly emphasized that failure is an essential part of the company's engineering philosophy. Because of that, the pressure was immense for the next two test flights, Flight 10 and Flight 11, where failure was no longer an option. The urgency wasn't just about easing public skepticism, but also about moving swiftly to Block 3 to test key Artemis technologies. Compounding the pressure, Block 2 hardware was rapidly running out. Fortunately, Flight 10 marked the first full success of the version 2 design, achieving all its primary objectives. Flight 11 built on that triumph, proving that August's victory was no fluke, but a sign that SpaceX is solidifying its progress toward the moon. While two successful Starship flights in a row may not fully put NASA's worries about Artemis 3 to rest, with plenty of technical challenges still ahead, 
they've certainly given a much-needed morale boost to Elon Musk, the SpaceX team, and Starship supporters around the world. Through Flight 11, SpaceX gained valuable insights, including how to refurbish and reuse an older booster equipped with 24 flight-proven Raptor engines. The mission also advanced their understanding of how to control the rocket's descent, an essential step toward achieving their ultimate goal, landing Starship upright and safely on a platform and on the rough lunar surface. This task is no small feat as it requires the rocket to decelerate, pivot upright, and touch down smoothly without tipping over. Flight 11 demonstrated progress by successfully completing a high-altitude flight and executing a safe ocean landing. Testing a new configuration with five engines instead of the previous three during the divert phase produced excellent results. This suggests that the new configuration could be a strong fit for the upcoming version 3 Super Heavy, which will rely on five engines during the burn segment that fine-tunes the booster's trajectory, adding extra redundancy in case of unexpected engine shutdowns. The team also perfectly replicated the key milestones from Flight 10, guiding S-38 into a suborbital trajectory, deploying eight full-scale mock-ups, successfully restarting a single Raptor engine, and most importantly, re-entering Earth's atmosphere and achieving a smooth splashdown in the Indian Ocean. Running in parallel with Flight 11, SpaceX's routine Falcon 9 operations continued seamlessly. After more than a week of weather and scheduling delays, a Falcon 9 rocket lifted off Monday night from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station carrying two dozen of Amazon's Project Kuiper Broadband Internet satellites. The launch took place roughly an hour and a half after the Starship from Flight 11 safely splashed down, marking another busy and successful day for SpaceX's ever-evolving launch cadence. The mission, known as Kuiper Falcon 03 or KF-03, experienced several days of launch delays due to unfavorable weather conditions both at Cape Canaveral and offshore. Liftoff from Space Launch Complex 40 finally occurred at 9.58 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. On Sunday, the 45th Weather Squadron predicted a 95% chance of favorable weather during the launch window. However, it also noted a moderate risk for the booster recovery area, based on a low-moderate high scale. Winds will gradually shift from the northwest to the north, and low moisture levels will allow for mostly clear skies, launch weather officers reported. This pattern is expected to hold through the backup window on Tuesday evening as well. Therefore, the only concern for both the primary and backup launch opportunities is a very low risk of violating the cumulus cloud rule. Recovery conditions will continue to be a watch item both days due to elevated winds and seas associated with the low near the landing zone. SpaceX launched the mission using the Falcon 9 first stage booster, B1091, marking its second flight. This booster, which is slated to serve as a Falcon Heavy core in the future, previously supported the KF-02 mission. B1091 executed a precise autonomous landing on the drone ship a shortfall of Gravitas, a little over eight minutes after liftoff. This marked the 128th successful landing on that vessel and the 517th overall booster recovery in SpaceX's history. The Kuiper satellite deployment sequence began about 56 minutes after launch and concluded in under eight minutes, expanding the Project Kuiper constellation to 153 satellites in low Earth orbit. This mission represents the sixth launch contributing to Amazon's Kuiper network following three earlier flights aboard United Launch Alliance Atlas V rockets and two previous Falcon 9 missions. Kuiper Systems LLC, better known as Project Kuiper, is an Amazon subsidiary founded in 2019 with the goal of building a vast satellite network to deliver low-latency broadband internet service. The project's name, Kuiper, was inspired by the Kuiper Belt a distant region of icy bodies orbiting the sun. On July 30, 2020, 
The FCC granted Amazon approval to deploy a constellation of 3,236 satellites in low Earth orbit. The rollout will occur in five phases, with internet service beginning once the first 578 satellites are operational. Under the FCC license, Amazon must have half of its satellites launched and functioning by July 30, 2026, and the rest no later than July 30, 2029. To accomplish this, Amazon has secured 92 rocket launches with United Launch Alliance, Ariane Group, and Blue Origin, representing an investment of more than $10 billion. In December 2023, Amazon expanded its partnerships by purchasing three additional launches from SpaceX, the company behind Starlink, a direct competitor in the satellite internet market. Kuiper Falcon 03 is the third and final launch that Amazon booked using a Falcon 9 rocket. In April 2019, Amazon announced plans to fund and launch Project Kuiper, a massive satellite constellation designed to deliver global broadband internet coverage. Company officials stated that the initiative would offer broadband service through partnerships with other companies, targeting tens of millions of people who lack basic access to broadband internet. However, it's still unclear whether Amazon will offer the service directly to consumers. Kuiper Systems President Rajiv Badial previously served as Vice President of SpaceX's Starlink program. After being dismissed by Elon Musk in 2018, Badial went on to establish Kuiper alongside several former SpaceX engineers. By December 2019, Amazon had petitioned the FCC to waive certain requirements, such as the 2016 application deadline that SpaceX and OneWeb were required to meet to license their satellite networks. In July 2020, the FCC granted Amazon authorization to deploy 3,236 satellites, contingent on conditions including non-interference with existing licensed systems. Amazon announced a $10 billion investment in the effort, which is expected to take up to a decade to fully complete. That December, Amazon introduced a low-cost flat panel user terminal for Project Kuiper, a compact K-band phased array antenna operating in the 17 to 30 gigahertz range. Measuring about 30 centimeters, 12 inches wide, the antenna can support data speeds up to 400 megabits per second, while costing less than 20% of traditional models. Amazon also stated it would remain launch agnostic, open to using rockets from various providers, rather than relying solely on Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin. In April 2021, Amazon signed a deal with ULA for nine Atlas V launches from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station and confirmed it would continue exploring additional launch options. A year later, in April 2022, Amazon secured contracts for 83 launches over the next decade, split among the European Ariane 6, 18 flights, Blue Origin's New Glenn, 12 flights with options for, 15 more, and ULA's Vulcan rocket, 38 flights. In August 2023, a shareholder lawsuit filed by the Cleveland Bakers and Teamsters Pension Fund accused Amazon's board of acting in bad faith regarding the $10 billion launch contracts, the company's second largest capital expenditure to date. The lawsuit claimed that 45% of the total went to Blue Origin and alleged that personal tensions between Bezos and SpaceX founder Elon Musk may have influenced Amazon's decision not to use the proven and potentially cheaper Falcon 9 rocket. Finally, on October 6, 2023, Amazon launched its first two prototype satellites, KuiperSat-1 and KuiperSat-2, aboard a ULA Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. The mission was a success, and both satellites were safely deorbited afterward. 